Today we're going to be talking about something really cool. This fella, the Venerable Dreadnought. If it focuses, you ripper. So, uh, Venerable Dreadnoughts and Normal Dreadnoughts actually both have a place now in this book. Let's talk about it right now. The Venerable Dreadnought. Let's just go over his basic stats before we get too far ahead of ourselves. So he has a movement of 6 inches. He has a weapon skill, a ballistic skill, both of 2 plus. He has a strength of 6 and a toughness of 7. He has 8 wounds, 5 attacks, leadership 8, and a 3 plus save. So Venerable Dreadnoughts come standard with an assault cannon that has a uh, Dreadnought close combat weapon on the other hand with the built-in Storm Bolter. Salt cannons are 24 inch range, heavy 6, strength 6, neg 1, and 1 damage. And the Dreadnought Close Combat Weapon is a close combat weapon, melee obviously. It is uh, strength times 2, taking him to 12. It is neg 3 AP and 3 damage, which is decent on a dude which does 5 attacks. Okay? Now, you've got some options. Uh, this model's assault cannon can be, can be replaced with one of the following. One heavy plasma cannon, one multi-melter, and one twin las cannon. Alright, one of the op options. So our heavy plasma cannon. It is two profiles, both 36 inches, both heavy D3. The standard is strength 7, neg 3, 2 damage, and blast. And the supercharge is strength 8, AP3, 3 damage, and blast. But any unmodified hit rolls of one, give this guy dude a wound. So typical plasma, obviously. Uh, then we've got the multi melter. It is 24 inch range. It is heavy two, strength eight, neg four, d6 damage. And uh, when you target something from half range, so 12 inches, it becomes d6 plus two damage. All right, so potential eight damage there, but within 12, so there's a bit of a trade off, unfortunately. And our twin las cannon, we've got 48 inch range, heavy 2, strength 9, neg 3, and d6 damage. Now, I particularly like taking this guy with the twin las cannon. Uh, in our army, there's not a lot of places to get long range anti tank. Uh, this dude happens to be able to take a bit, and uh, the twin las cannon is actually pretty good. Now, his other arm, the dreadnought close combat weapon arm, it can be replaced with one of the following. So a missile launcher, which means he loses his close combat ability, uh, or he can have a dreadnought close combat weapon with a heavy flamer instead of the heavy bolter. Uh, not heavy bolter, sorry, the storm bolter. So the missile launcher, it is 48 inch range, heavy D6, strength 4, AP0, 1 damage and blast, or it can fire crack. So it's basically like the grenades, you have frag, crack grenades, this thing shoots one of the two profiles. So the other is crack, 48 inches, heavy one, strength eight, AP neg two, and D6 damage. So it's another long range anti-tank weapon. Uh, I will often, as you can see with this fella, run uh, twin twin plasma, that's uh, sorry, twin las cannon. Let's try to focus on me. Twin las cannon with the missile launcher. Now I don't glue my pieces on so I can change them, okay? So it just depends where you need some holes plugged in your list. I'll often also run in with the las cannon, twin las cannons and the, the fists. Sometimes players will be able to get things into your back lines and take out your, um, your artillery pieces or your ranged guns, things like that. Having this dude with the fist means you've got a bit of counter punch. Uh, it also means that in your matchups, you've got some versatility. You can either move him forward with the bulk of your force and start punching things, or you can hold him back and then do the defensive counter attack type thing as well. So uh, both those options aren't too bad. Uh, the plasma cannon, it's actually not bad as well. It's a good anti-infantry. Anti the thing is, uh, this book is just filled with like close combat weapons, which will just mince medium infantry. And uh, your storm bolters will just mince weak infantry. So taking more anti-infantry, you're kind of just redundant on top of redundant on top of redundant. 
So the things to focus on in this book is mainly killing tanks at range and also getting things into combat to kill them, okay? Otherwise you're gonna find yourself in some problems on a lot of occasions. Uh, well, also with this guy, we've got the Knights of Titan, so all the usual Knights of Titan abilities. Now this dude doesn't have the deep striking ability, all right? So he doesn't have teleport strike, so he can't just go drop in. There is another way to do that with the Storm Raven, but we'll talk about that with the Storm Raven. When he dies, he does explode on a D6 roll of a six. Every unit within three inches gets one mortal wound. He's got Duty Eternal. Each time an attack is allocated to this model, subtract one from the damage characteristic of that attack to a minimum of one. Uh, basically, uh, that means a lot of the small arms fire and even the, some of the medium sort of weapons like uh, plasma, overcharge plasmas, uh, d damage three orc rockets, things like that. It's going to reduce a bit of your damage. And furthermore, he's also got this other thing called Unyielding Ancient. So each time this model would lose a wound, roll 1d6 on a six, that wound is not lost. Uh, so let's say an orc shot at you with his rocket. He's hit with one wounded you, you've failed your save, the three damage has gone in, all right? So the duty channel is gonna reduce that to two. And now you get to roll two dice. So one for each point of that damage. If you roll a six, the damage is then reduced, has gone as well, all right? So if you roll two sixes, he takes no damage. You roll one six, he takes one damage. And if you don't roll any sixes, he's, he's stuck with the two damage. But it, it just keeps him around that little tiny bit longer. Now he's also a Psyker. Uh, he comes with Smite and Armored Resilience as standard. Armored Resilience is a power which gives you plus one to your save. Okay, now, most other Dreadnoughts in other armies aren't Psychers. There's a couple of exceptions in some, some type of Marine chapters, but typically they're not Psychers. These Dreadnoughts are, Dreadnoughts are Psychers, so they get to cast an ability. Uh, the one they come with is Armored Resilience. It's, it comes with that standard. What it does is it boosts your armor save. So you then get to have a two plus save Venerable Dreadnought, okay? That's something a lot of armies don't get as well. That's going to be good because a lot of stuff you'll see out there that's anti-tank, a lot of it's gonna be AP Neg 3. There's some stuff that's AP Neg 4 as well. That'll basically give you a save against those things. Uh, so the AP 3 you'll get a five plus save and the AP Neg 4 you'll get a six up. You're not gonna pass it every time. Don't sit there and, and hope to, to God that that's gonna save your Dreadnought's life. Typically it won't, uh, but there's the odd occasion where you will stop a bit of damage coming in. The other thing as well, we've got access to Sanctuary, which is an ability which, a psychic power which gives you a four plus and vulnerable. He can't cast it on himself, but you can have another unit nearby that can. And uh, also in the Sword Brotherings, they've got a Warlord trait, which works a bit like Sanctuary. I cannot think of the name of it. Uh, that one, you can't actually cast on, the, on this dude because he doesn't have the Brotherhood keyword, but you can cast Sanctuary on him. Uh, yeah, so he can't take Sword Bearers, all right? So keep that in mind. So that comes to my next part. So he is a vehicle and he is core, so you are able to get rerolls. But keep in mind that this dude is not a Brotherhood. He has got Honored Knights, so he is technically a Paladin in a, in a way. Uh, so you won't be able to get the rerolls off dudes that say Brotherhood rerolls. You will get rerolls off Drago, and uh, there is a stratagem that these guys get as well, which is called uh, Shadow of Unyielding Legends. Uh, that's uh, different to what it used to be called. I think it was called the Heed the Wisdom of the Ancients or something. It used to give you reroll one to hit bubble. So this one is use your strategy of your command phase. Selects one Grey Knight's Dreadnought model from your army. Uh, this dude has the Dreadnought keyword, so he can activate it. It's one CP. Until the end of your next command phase, models that, uh, that models that model gains either the Rights of Battle ability or the Tactical Precision ability as shown below. Rights of Battle is an aura. While friendly Grey Knight's core unit is within six inches of this model, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, reroll hit roll of one. And Tactical Precision is also an aura. While a friendly Grey Knight's core unit is within six inches of this model, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, reroll, a wound roll of one. So if you do the reroll wound roll and have Drago, you're rerolling hitting a wound each turn, 
which is handy. Uh, and it doesn't have Brotherhood specific in that. So even if you take him in a Brotherhood uh, detachment, you can then use that to give yourself rerolls to hit and things like that. Now, he doesn't get Brotherhood powers and he doesn't get some synergies with some of the other Brotherhood stuff, which is why the Dreadnought now, even though his stats are a little bit inferior, you do get the ability to do those other things. So we'll talk about that in the Dreadnought video, which should be coming out next. Alrighty, cheerio.